Greetings of peace. Welcome to The Dean Show. My next guest spent eight years in the monastery and he ended up having a transition in his life to accepting this beautiful way of life of Islam and he wrote a book, Jesus of the Bible, because he knows the Bible very well. He studied it in Greek and Latin and he made a comparison of Jesus of the Bible and Jesus of the Quran. So we're going to be discussing this book and then at the end let you be the judge. Which Jesus do I want to follow? Is the true message there in the Bible? We have bits and pieces of it, but it's been changed, it's been corrupted. And then we have the verbatim word of God, unchanged, tamper-free, tamper-proof. It's been preserved. And there's a message about this mighty messenger in the Quran. All of this and more on this week's show with Michael DeCerno here on The Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean's, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean's, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Peace be with you too. Michael DeCero. DeCero. Siciliano. Siciliano. So it rhymes with Italiano. Italiano. The, oh. the Decero means uh, of wax. Of what? You know, of course, people, their families would always be known by a profession or labor. Yeah. So I'm guessing maybe my family was in the wax business. <laughs> you, you, you wrote a book. You're an author of a few books. Yes. One of them is Jesus in the Bible and the Quran. Yes. How did you get to writing this book? What made you, because you spent eight and a half years in the monastery. Yes. But now you're a Muslim. Yes. And you're writing this book. That's right. How did this all transpire? So, so after I accepted Islam, alhamdulillah, I was on fire for the deen. You know, I wanted to, when I was a Catholic, I was very pious, very devout, and on fire. And I brought that same fire and even, even greater one into Islam. I wanted to give dawah, and the, there's, a, there's a sheikh in my, in from my, my masjid near my, my, my home where I live. His name's uh, Hassan Ban. And he was the brother who gave me the dawah in the beginning. He was a sheikh. What's his name? Hassan. Hassan, Hassan Ban. He's from, Hassan e from Egypt. Not Hassan Rejvich? No, 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 no. Okay, no. go ahead. So he, he gave me the dawah mm -hmm. for accepting Islam. And he was the one who knew the Bible very, very well, alhamdulillah. And he always said to me, because he was very in, much encouraging me to be active in dawah, to get my story known, to talk about Christianity, the Bible, Jesus, Mary, the saints, all this stuff. But then he, he offered me, he made a suggestion. He said, why don't you either do lectures or write books? I said, well, I would do both. But I guess right now, because my Islamic knowledge is very limited, I would rather just write books about Christianity and Islam. So I began my, my book about seven months ago, eight, eight months ago, alhamdulillah, is when I really uh, was in the middle of it. And it was printed. And the, the whole reason for writing the book is very simple. When I first was learning about Islam, I, I, I as a Christian understood Jesus as being two people. There was the Jesus I knew, and there was the Jesus I saw in the Quran. And if you said to me when I was a Catholic, you know, is this the same Jesus? No, never. You know, they believe he's a prophet. They believe he's, you know, he's not God. They believe he didn't die on the cross or rise from the dead. You must be crazy. The Jesus that I know is God, the Son of God, you know, dies on the cross, takes away original sin. Two different people. But when I really was receiving the dawah and beginning to really think about things openly, not being biased, but with an open heart, seeking the truth. Because above being Catholic or anything else, I'm a seeker of truth. And I was seeking the truth. Now, what do you cover in this book? What are some of the well, chapters that... What do you, it what begins do you with a chapter on the Trinity. 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 Of course, I begin with the Shema Israel, which, of course, is the Jewish proclamation. Now, you studied in Latin and Greek. Latin and Greek, but this is Hebrew. Of course, I, I can't speak the Hebrew. But in, God said, Moses said, inspired by God, the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Worship Him alone. 
You shall love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy might, with all thy, all thy being. This Shema. See, one thing you have to remember when you think about Jesus, because people just think, Christians think God. Jesus was a Jew. This is really, this is fascinating. He's a Jew. He was born a Jew. He, he practiced the Jewish rituals, the Jewish feasts. He believed like a Jew. What did the Jews believe? Shema Israel. Shema, Shema Israel. God is one. Worship Him. Why would Jesus believe something different than that? He's a Jew. The Shema, every Jew at the time of Jesus would have it written on their doorpost. So every time they walked in, they would recite it, and when they would leave, they would recite it. Have you ever seen the, uh, the Jews in Israel that sometimes they have like these uh, little boxes on their foreheads? Mm -hmm. and, well, inside those boxes actually is the Shema Israel. Heroes of the Lord thy God is one God. Worship Him alone. That's the Jesus. That's the Jewish Jesus. Now, there, there, is, there, is, there is no problem here as far when you say Jewish, because we believe he submitted to the will of God. He yes. was, that's what a Muslim yes. is. Jewish, can we say that's the nationality? Exactly. God, if he's God, he had a nationality. <laughs> that's another point. And a birthday. <laughs> that's right. And a so, birthday. Yeah. Even though December 25th is nowhere close. Yeah. So you can, you can actually be, you can keep your nationality, be Jewish, but be one, a Muslim. Exactly. Right. So Jesus, being a Jew, believed this. Now, he confirms this. So my first chapter is on the Trinity. When they asked him, who are you? Or no, not who are you. They asked him. They said, what's the greatest commandment? He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, worship him alone. If Jesus was God, or bringing something new, he should have said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is me, or the Lord thy God is three, or the Lord thy God is three in one. What happened? That was his chance. Me, three, he didn't say me, that. Me, three, one, one and three, whatever. He doesn't say it. That's deep if you think about it. The Lord thy God is one. He confirms what Moses brought, the prophets brought. And he brought, and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, brought the same message. And the, the, the word in the Hebrew and then the Arabic, Ahad, I mean, Ahad. Th this word, one, this is not dividable into three. Nope. If you know the, no. uh, the nope. original. There is no plurality within the oneness of God. Christians will yeah. say there's a plurality in the Godhead, but there is no plurality. No, let's stop right there. Yes. No plurality. He had a perfect opportunity to discuss the Trinity. He never did. No. And we'll be going to be right back to discuss Jesus of the Bible and the Quran so you can make an informed decision when we come back here in the Dean Show. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show with Michael DeCerno. DeCero. DeCero, DeCero, I apologize. <laughs> DeCero, uh, eight and a half years in a monastery. You study the Latin and the Greek. Yes. Now the Latin and the Greek... The, that's the New Testament, what it was um, revealed in, right? Well, yes. the, what we have of yes. not even a copy of an original. Yes, right? the, the earliest uh, fragments, as what you would call them, are in Greek. The Latin, the Latin uh, Bibles that you see, the fragments, aren't until later centuries. It really, comes, the Greek is the earliest. It, it comes from, from where? It goes from where? From Latin to Greek? No, no, no. From, from Greek, Greek to Latin. From sorry, Aramaic yeah. to Greek to Latin. So the original, which we don't have. No, nowhere to be found. It's Aramaic. That's right. Then, and even the Greek originals that they had are nowhere to be found. So then you have copies of copies of copies right. of nothing original in Greek. That's right, in Greek. And you study the Greek. And Latin. And then, and then it goes into Latin. That's right. And any of the Greek or in the Latin, you don't have, uh, everything is clear. Here, Israel, the Lord of God is one. Same thing. Nothing about a trinity nope. mentioned. Nope. How about the point that people make that Jesus is God? Man, God, yes. uh, fully human, fully God at the same time. Yes. Uh, what about this point, that Jesus is God, literal, well, literally God? The second chapter of my book is, did Jesus say, I am God? And the clear answer is no, but I'm not just going to leave you with that. The reason I came to the conclusion that Jesus isn't God is because the Jesus that I knew was who the church said Jesus was. But the Jesus himself, who's in the Bible, does not put these words in his own mouth. People put them in his mouth, but he himself does not put those words in his mouth or out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Jesus, he said, the Father is greater than all. He said, the Father, in John's Gospel, the Father is greater than all. In John's Gospel, he says, the Father is greater than me. If Jesus is God and the Father is God, and one God is greater than the other, you have like a God who's subordinate to a higher God. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. It's like pagan worship of gods. Gods having different degrees of majesty and 
and superiority. He said, in John's Gospel, he says, the Father is greater than all, the Father is greater than me. He said, of my, in John's Gospel, of myself, I can do nothing. So what does that mean? What does nothing mean? I mean, I speak English, it's my mother tongue, maybe I'm making a mistake. Nothing means nothing. He can do nothing by himself, which means he depends on God. Now, God, one of his attributes, is what's called self-sufficient. Self-sufficient means God needs nothing. There's nothing God needs. He needs nothing. So for the fact that Jesus says, of myself, I can do nothing, by myself, I can do nothing, means he depends on, on God. And if Jesus is in need of something, he cannot be God mm -hmm. because he wouldn't be self-sufficient. Now, one of the favorites of the Christians for, for proof of Jesus' divinity is the Father and I are one, John chapter 10, verse 30. Now, before you go into those, you actually, the last time we met, you, you had a whole variety of those verses. Can you yes. just name, name, because you said uh, this one, you mentioned I and the Father before Abraham was. Yes. Well, this, give, me, give me some of the, those. The ones that just, they try to justify yes. him. Yeah, well, of course, before Abraham was, I am. That's one. This is the most famous of the famous. Yeah. The Father and I are one. Yes. Uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, with God, and the Word was God. John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.1. 1, 1. Yeah. These are your more famous verses. Uh, but the fact is, is that when you look at John chapter 10, verse 30, the Father and I are one. Every Christian, and I do dawah with Christians regularly, and there is rarely a Christian who can give me the context of that. Rarely. If you want to read something, you don't just take the verse. You take like five verses before and five verses after to get a context to get the text within the greater text. Now, the actual context of John 10, verse 30, is Jesus is talking about being the good shepherd. And very simply, he says, quote, The Father have the sheep in his hand, and he protects them, and he gives them eternal life, and he shall never lose them. He holds them. They will not be lost. He protects them. And he says, I, too, have the sheep in my hand. And I hold them. I protect them. I'm the good shepherd. The Father's the good shepherd. The Father and I are one. Does that sound like Jesus is saying, oh, the Father and I are one in substance or essence? No. He's saying they're one in purpose, one in mission. Just as the Father has the sheep in his hand and holds them and won't let them go, so Jesus too has the sheep in his hand and won't let them go. For the Father and Jesus are one in purpose and in mission of protecting the sheep. Because the fact is, is that God sends prophets, and the prophet is just as responsible as God in protecting the people who God sent the prophet to. Before Abraham was, I am. Yes. Before Abraham was, I am. This is another big one. Now, Christians love the I am statements, of course. When Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am, okay, well, my response is, in what way? Of course, they say, as God, you know, as as a divine being, they don't believe he's Jesus with a body before creation. He believes he's Jesus who's divine in union with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit before creation. But the fact is, is before Abraham was, I am. Jesus doesn't say he was there with God before, as God, before he had a body. What he says is before Abraham was, I am. Now, in the, we're all, we all existed before the creation of everything. We all existed. But how? Did we exist like this? No. We existed in the knowledge of God. God, in his knowledge, you were there. I was there. Hitler was there. Muhammad was there. Jesus was there. And Abraham was there. We all were before Abraham in the knowledge of God. But the Christians, they try to justify Jesus being God because they say that's God's name. That God's name is I am. And they, they, they thrive on these I am statements. Like, for example, Jesus saying, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. This is one of the most famous quotes that you'll hear from Christians. But the fact is, is this, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I'm very confident in the statement I'm about to make. When Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, isn't every prophet that's sent the way to God for his people? That's the truth. You can't be wrong there because that's, that's right. every prophet was the, the way every to truth life. Isn't every prophet the way to eternal life, mm -hmm. to life? Of course. And isn't every prophet bring truth, revelation? Yes. So when you take all of the clear verses like um, there is, why do you call me good? No one's good but God. That's right. 
the Father is greater than I, that he's sub subordinate to God, yes. that he's praying to God, that, you know, all of these clear verses, then you have these that are, like, ambiguous. Because if yes. you opened up, you know, the Bible and you took yeah. it just to layman and said, what do you think this is? Uh, he says, before Abraham was I am. Does that prove Jesus is God? You right. have to somehow connect it back to something of the Old Testament. That's right. put, and it's confusing. Uh, before we go, so uh, the question is, are there, cl there's clear verses, here is the Lord that God, God is one you mentioned, and are these verses that people use, are they more ambiguous? Oh, ambiguous. There's nothing clear about, I mean, let's think about this a second. A man says, before Abraham was, I am. Did you hear, I am God? No. No. No, it's not. No. So these are, these are things that you can interpret, misconstrue. Yes. Uh, why are you doing this before we go to break? Do you hate Christians? Do you hate oh, Jesus? Oh, no, 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 not at all. You're the Antichrist? Actually, one <laughs> of the first questions I was asked when I became a Muslim by a fellow, uh, ex, uh, by a fellow uh, Catholic religious that I lived with, he well, said... You know, you know what? We've got to go to break. Yes, we're going to start yes, the section. Yes. You know, uh, do you hate uh, Jesus? Do no, you hate Christians? No. And you were asked something similar no. to this. When we come back, don't no. go anywhere <laughs> on The Dean Show with <laughs> Michael DeCero. There we go. We'll be right back. Yeah. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show. So, that's the question. Are you someone who hates Jesus? No. What's this guy, this guy that uh, in your church? What yes, happened? well, he said to me, his first, his first re question he asked me was, do you miss Jesus yet? I said, no. Why would I miss Jesus? I still love Jesus. Just God on his truth, I actually have an even greater love for Jesus as a Muslim than I ever did as a Christian. And many Christians don't understand that. But if you become a Muslim, inshallah, you'll understand it. Uh -huh. God willing, you'll understand that. You have to experience it to know what I mean. It's not just something I can say and you're going to be like, oh yeah, I know what he means. You have to accept this deen to really understand how you could love Jesus more. Yeah. And if you say you don't love Jesus, this is That's a one-way right. ticket to that. We are, we are the only non-Christian religion that makes it an article of belief, of faith, to believe that Jesus was sent, that He is a prophet, that He is the Messiah, He is the Word of God, He's the Spirit of God. We're the only ones. So Christians need to thank us for all the, the billions of people that we bring to loving Jesus. That's, that's, because we don't teach our people to hate Jesus. We teach them to love Jesus. You've got to love Jesus to be a Muslim. You have to. Now, what about the Christian? They think, oh, you hate us now. And I, yes. I always tell Christians, you know, it's out of the love yes. that we're sharing this message. What, right. what do you have to say? Well, it's, in my honest opinion, it's just fraternal correction. What I do is not attack a Christian. I've had a Christian say to me, it seems like you're attacking. I'm not attacking. I'm not. What I'm doing is giving my story what I found to be errors, where I found contradictions. And in finding those errors and contradictions, I'm bringing them to light. But see, the, the, the difference between people, most people is this. You have problem finders and problem solvers. It's easy to find a problem. It's hard to find people who want to find the solutions to the problems. So I bring to light the contradictions and the errors that I found. But at the same time, I don't just leave you there. I offer you something different, an alternative, an alternative, mm -hmm. and a beautiful one. I mean, you have a lot of people who are coming out. They're not necessarily Muslim. You have a, a, a United Methodist minister, uh, Richard uh, Haggiston, who, who came out, and he wrote an article. He's a Christian, eight things that your pastor will never tell you about the, the Bible. And these are things that you mentioned now as a Muslim, but this is a, this is a scholar who went to seminary, and he mentions a lot of these facts about the Bible being... Uh, change, not having the originals, uh, about Jesus uh, not being God, some of these books being forgeries, and these are things that, um, you know, the, the, the crucifixion, where the different accounts, if this is a great um, event that happened, you have one gospel speaking about him being Galloway, the other one speaking him being somewhere in another location during this. Uh, do you also talk about this in, in your book? Oh, yes. I talk about the crucifixion. I talk about Jesus being God, the Trinity, the Son of God, uh, the history of the Bible. I talk about Muhammad in the Bible. I talk about the Injil. I talk about how the Quran refutes the Trinity, how it refutes Jesus being God. Because the way I write the book is I state what the Christian belief is and where the errors are, and I show how the Quran corrects it. And so, alhamdulillah, that's, I'm, I'm happy I did it how this does way. It, so it, it shows the errors... Yes. And, and this is what this um, Method Methodist uh, pastor, preacher, he also, this Christian, and m many others uh, who, come, who are coming out because 
Uh, well, these people, they go, he mentions in his article how he went to seminary school, and then they clearly state in the seminary school that many of these books are forgeries, that they don't know. That's right. Is this a fact now? Yes, of course. Well, when you come to the Bible, it's a, a very detailed, I mean, you could talk for days on this topic, but when you talk about the history of the Bible, the Gospels today are called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're called canonical scripture by the church. But before they were called canonical scripture, before they were called gospels and they were part of a canon, the earliest church fathers called them the memoirs of the apostles. That's not scripture. It's memoirs. They didn't say it was scripture. They didn't say it was inspired. They didn't say the Holy Spirit inspired these books. It was memoirs of the apostles. They're, they're memories of who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. What about now, before we get into, we're almost out of time, Jesus, many people now, they say, okay, he's not God, but he's the literal son of God. Yes. What about that? Well, when, we, when you look at Jesus being the son of God, in the words of Ahmed Dira, gods have sons by the tons. In this book, I go from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and I quote every single time that God references people as being his sons, and I put it in there. I, I write it every, from the beginning to the end, the whole Bible from beginning to end. God had so many sons. Israel was his son. Ephraim was his son. Jesus was his son. Adam was his son. Every, Paul was his son. Paul says everybody can become the sons of God who are born by baptism and redeemed by the blood of Christ. Everybody can become sons of God. So I'm a son. You're a son. Jesus is a son. But the fact is, is this, is when you talk about son, and this is important to remember, there's a difference between saying the word son to a Jew and to a Greek. Jews believed in one God. If they heard the word son, and it is in their Bible, they would have thought metaphorical. A Greek or a Roman who were pagans and believed gods came down and God had sons, literal sons. When Paul goes to the Greeks and he says, he says Jesus is the son of God, let's say, the Greek would have taken that literally. Jesus literally was born of God as a son. Through, 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 through the conjugal act of intercourse. So, for, so, so, so Paul, you know, he, he brings this message to the Greeks. And see, this is, the, this is the thing. And one thing you get from Christians is this. They say, if the Bible is distorted, show me where. And see, this is one thing we have to remember as Muslims too. When we say Injil, we're not talking about a book Jesus carried under his arm. We're talking about the actual revelation that came off the tongue of, of mm -hmm. that man's mouth. Yeah. That was distorted. But the actual Bible itself, where was this distorted? My own personal opinion, because a lot of Muslims will say the Council of Nicaea when they were forming the canons. And yes, there is truth to the statement. But it had to come before, because you have people calling Jesus God in the year 107 AD. There's letters of many men saying Jesus is God. So you can't say the Council of Nicaea because that's later, and they're already calling him God. So where was this? My own personal theory, and it's not something I got from somebody, this is my own research, my own personal theory on this. In the Acts of the Apostles, Paul and Barnabas go to the Greeks. Paul performs a miracle, one miracle. When he performs this miracle, the Greeks put him on their shoulder and Barnabas on their other shoulders, and they all start celebrating. They're all celebrating. And they said, truly, quote, truly the gods have come down to us in human form. And they called, they called uh, Paul Zeus and Barnab Barnabas Hermes. Now, they take them to the temple to, to sacrifice to the gods. Now, here's my question. If, if Paul did one miracle, just one, and they took Paul and Barnabas as gods because of one miracle. Imagine, now Imagine what they're doing with Jesus. Virgin yeah. birth, no father, just a mother. All those miracles, r raising people from the dead. They would have thought he was super God. Yeah, I see the point you're making. Yeah. So this is where I believe the d distortion comes in. The Greeks, because see, in the early church, you had the, he the Hebrew th theology and the Hebrew thought and the Greek theology and the Greek thought. And uh, in the beginning, they were one, but then they went separate ways. And when they went separate ways, the Greek and Paul's school of Pauline theology actually won out. 
Mm -hmm. And because of that, you have the th theology today is based upon the, the Greek theologians and the Greek philosophers. We got 30 seconds left. What is your belief about Jesus now? Yes, as a Muslim? well, 30 seconds. The Jesus that I believe today is the exact same Jesus who I always believed in, and even greater. He is Jesus who was born of a Virgin Mary. He is Jesus who was conceived without a father. He is Jesus who is not God, but a prophet sent by God, a mighty prophet sent by God, confirming the book before him. Jesus said in the Bible, he said, I come not, he said, I come not to destroy the law, but to fulfill it and confirm it. That is exactly what we believe about Jesus. He came, he brought the Injil, he brought the gospel, and he confirmed the books of old. He said, while I'm with you, not one iota, not one word shall be taken away from the law. So why don't the Christians and the Jews still follow the law? So the Jesus we believe in is the Jesus who confirmed the law, the Jesus who who, who we love is the one born of the Virgin Mary, born of the Spirit. He is the Word of God because God said, be, and He became. He is the Spirit of Allah. And we as Muslims, we can't be Muslims. I could go to the masjid, to the mosque, to become a Muslim, and if that imam says to me, do you believe in Jesus? And I say no, but I believe in everything else, he won't let me become a Muslim. That's how much we admire and love Jesus. And that same Jesus is the Jesus that you discover who didn't preach Trinity, didn't preach divinity, didn't preach sonship, didn't preach original sin, and who instead of his father saying, son, you know what, I love the criminals more than you, and so let me kill you for them, God loved him so much that he preserved him and ascended him into heaven because of the glory of God and his mercy. That's mercy. Saved him from the humiliation. That's right, from the humiliation. Thank you very much for being with us. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. We hope to have you back again sometime yes, again on the Dean Show. God willing. Thank you. Inshallah. And I think like over 1.7 billion people in the world, they believe and in love Jesus. And as you've gotten to hear from a former Christian himself who spent eight and a half years in a monastery and studying the Greek and the Latin, but then he really started to look at the evidence after he met a Muslim and he saw that the things that he was being told just didn't add up, the evidence wasn't there and he didn't just want to blindly follow what the church was telling him. So he investigated these things and he saw that there was no explicit, ambiguous, clear, unambiguous statement where Jesus, peace be upon him, ever said that he was the creator, that he was God, or he ever called people to worship him. No. And the Bible, as he states in his book, has sons by the tons. So Jesus, as is stated in the Quran, is a mighty messenger that came to call the people to worship the creator, not the creation. And I think your heart has an inclination to that, because that just makes sense. The creator is the creator. Jesus and everything else is his creation. So... We pray to who Jesus prayed to. And you can start with this Lord's Prayer. If you say, hallowed be thy name. This is talking about the Lord, the master of creation. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. That's Islam. Thy will. Your will, O oh God. I want to do your will. That's Islam. To learn more, call 1-800-662-ISLAM. Pick up the Quran and see all the beautiful teachings that are in the Quran of good character, of charity, of the pure message of monotheism, all of these things and more that really will enlighten you. But ignorance is a killer itself, so if you choose to stay ignorant, all of these doors of goodness won't open up to you. So hook up with us, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and stay in touch, and we'll see you next time, God willing. Until then, peace be with you. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.